The changes currently affecting the world are more profound than anything it has experienced for over a century. The conflict in Ukraine has created a humanitarian crisis, threatening global energy supplies and food security. European governments are increasing their military spending, even as people are taking to the streets to protest the high cost of living and the erosion of their rights. Washington is adding fuel to the Ukrainian fire while playing a similar game in the Asia-Pacific region. It's selling weapons to Taiwan, China, forming military alliances, fomenting political confrontation, and initiating trade and technology wars for the sole purpose of containing China. Around the world, regions are facing growing challenges. Can humanity find a way out of its current predicament? Can a new form of human civilization be built? To find the answers, we need to reflect on history. A major turning point in international relations was, without a doubt, the end of the Cold War. American political scientist Francis Fukuyama in The End of History stated that we have reached the end point of mankind's ideological evolution and that Western liberal democracy had become the final form of human government. However, there is a danger inherent in this assertion. It is that American exceptionalism will evolve over time into the so-called moral high ground, constructed by Washington to facilitate the imposition of its political system on other societies. Fukuyama's own mentor, however, believed that the end of history had not yet arrived. Samuel Huntington argued that, in fact, the focus of conflict had merely shifted. In a series of articles published in 1996, he declared that the new world order would be shaped by the clash of civilizations. 92 senesinde New York Times'ta Mart ayında yazı yayınlandı. Orada diyor ki Amerikan Pentagon Pentagon'a yani Savunma Bakanlığı'na bir rapor hazırlanıyor. Bu raporda deniyor ki soğuk savaş bitti. Yeni uluslararası güç merkezleri ortaya çıkarsa bunları engellememiz lazım diyor. Bu gizli belge. Sonra sızdırılıyor basına. Yani güç merkezlerinin ortaya çıkmasını engellemeyi amaçlıyor. Fakat Amerika sistemi kurmuş, önce sistemin ideolojisini yapmış ve kurumlar ona göre belirlemiş. Ama şimdi Amerika'nın bu hem Huntington'un hem Fukuyama'nın düşünceleri üzerine yeni bir yapılanmaya gidecekler. Bunun altyapısını hazırlıyorlar. Yani ideolojik, politik altyapısını, düşünsel altyapısını hazırlıyorlar. This thinking gradually matured as the Cold War came to an end. However, applying it in the real world would bring bloodshed and suffering. In 1989, just a month after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the United States invaded Panama. On January 17, 1991, people around the world watched live images broadcast by CNN of missiles striking Iraq. In 1999, NATO bombed Yugoslavia, marking the escalation of the Washington-led strike and intimidation strategy. The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 provided the United States with a convenient excuse for attacking Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria. Every nation and every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. U.S. attempts to export its ideology have not only undermined stability and development in the countries and regions targeted, they have also created a breeding ground for terrorist organizations such as ISIS. اقدامات سلطه‌جویانه آمریکا برای سیطره بر جهان سراسر دنیا رو دچار یک وضعیت بسیار خطرناک و همراه با جنگ، درگیری و از کنترل خارج شدن شرایط اجتماعی کرده. گسترش نئولیبرالیسم با پشتوانه نظامگری هیچ سودی برای توسعه و مدرنیزی شدن جهان نداشته. این واقعیت که امروز شاهدیم قطعی بر در عراق و لبنان به یک اتفاق عادی تبدیل شده 
به عبارتی نشون میده که پای مداخله جویانه امریکا و هر جای جهان که باز شده مشکلات اقتصادی و اجتماعی هم از راه رسیده و باعث درگیری های شدید اجتماعی در مناطقی میشه که امریکا به دخالت در امور آنها میپردازه تا کنون هیچ از مناطقی که امریکا در اون مداخله کرده نتونست از نفرین و طبعات ویرانگر این دخالت ها در امان باشه به عنوان مثال در منطقه بالکان کوزوا همچنان با مناقشات مربوط به حق حاکمیت خود مواجهه و از اختلافات نژادی و فرقه‌ای رنج می‌بره. بنابراین آنچه که فرانسیس فوکویاما با عنوان پایان تاریخ از آن یاد می‌کنه به هیچ وجه وجود نداره. تا زمانی که انسان وجود داشته باشه، تاریخ نمی‌تونه پایان داشته باشه. زیرا تنها در صورت از بین رفتن انسان هاست که تاریخ می‌تونه به پایان برسه. The US through its aggression has only succeeded in tarnishing its own image. By contrast, in Asia, a model of development and change has emerged that is bringing renewed hope to people. The inclusive and peaceful nature of Chinese civilization is offering a fresh alternative for improving international relations. In the late 1970s, drawing on its 5,000 years of civilization, China embarked on a unique development path. In the course of the next 40 years, China's economy expanded 40-fold, an achievement described by experts as a miracle. In 2013, Beijing proposed the Belt and Road Initiative. The initiative aims to create a new form of human civilization, based on the principles of extensive consultation joint contributions, and shared benefits. It also seeks to restore the Eurasian continent, including Turkey, to its position at the heart of human civilization. Around the world, numerous countries and regions have reaped the benefits of China's transformation. In 2014, the BRICS countries established the New Development Bank. Today, they are outperforming the G7 the so-called Club of Rich Nations. The BRICS countries now account for 31.5% of global GDP. The wisdom accumulated over thousands of years is evident in Chinese diplomacy. This has become increasingly apparent under the leadership of Xi Jinping. Beijing, in promoting bilateral and regional cooperation, is advocating principles that stand to benefit everyone. Xi Jinping believes that long-standing and complex global issues can be tackled by reforming the existing system of global governance and adopting new approaches. America şunu hesap ediyordu. Ben yine 2. Dünya Savaşı'nın sonrası gibi ortada bir güç görünmüyor. Çin'de görünmüyor, Sovyetler görünmüyor. Gel Çin görevde. Çin'de aynı toparlanmamış 90'lı yılların başları. Ne yapabiliriz? Yeniden biz ideolojilerimizi belirleyelim ve biz o ideolojilere göre yeniden uluslararası sistemin kurumlarını oluşturalım. Fakat buna 2000'li yıllara gelince 2000'in başlarında hem Çin hem de Ru Rusya'da, Rusya Federasyonu'nda Putin buna karşı çıktı. Dediler ki uluslararası kurumları oluşturalım, bir araya gelelim, bu kurumların içini beraber dolduralım. Amerika nesep o değildi. Benim ideolojimle o kurumları ben doldururum diyordu. Ha, öyle olmadı işte. In 2021, at the United Nations General Assembly, China's president became the first world leader to propose a global development initiative. Over the past decade, China has more than quadrupled its investment in multilateral development institutions. China's proposal was timely. The COVID-19 pandemic, the global wealth imbalance, and trade wars launched by the US, among other factors, were severely hindering the poorer country's development. Among eight areas prioritized by the Global Development Initiative are poverty alleviation and food security. The level of interest shown by the international community for this initiative was far greater than expected. At the UN, more than 60 countries have joined the group of friends of the Global Development Initiative. The Atlantic Council, a US-sponsored think tank, has expressed concern that China has gained discourse power on development. China's initiative fully accords with the United Nations 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. In 2022, 
China also proposed the Global Security Initiative. Tested and proven in the Middle East, it has already facilitated reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran and opened the door to negotiations on the situation in Yemen. Senior U.S. diplomats, including Henry Kissinger, have acknowledged the potential of this initiative for resolving the Ukraine crisis. A year into the conflict in Ukraine, Beijing issued a 12-point peace proposal, which was praised by Moscow. And Ukraine described as meaningful a visit by a Chinese special envoy. In March 2023, Chinese leader Xi Jinping announced the Global Civilization Initiative. The initiative is in line with the vision of a community with a shared future for humanity, set out by Xi Jinping a decade ago. President Xi expanded on it at the CPC dialogue with world political parties. In his keynote address, Join Hands on the Path Towards Modernization, he raised a number of questions. Polarization or common prosperity? draining the pond to catch the fish, or creating harmony between man and nature, copying other countries' development model, or achieving independent development in light of national conditions. These are crucial questions raised by the Chinese leader that the world needs to consider. The rampant development of capitalism is reducing people to numbers and happiness to a commodity. A climate crisis is looming as damage continues to be inflicted on the ozone layer. The lessons have been painful, but now people are realizing that the hegemonic model is unsustainable. Yes, असल में चाइना की जो तरक्की को समझने के लिए सही मानों में हमें चीनी तहजीब के तनाज़र में चीन की तरक्की को समझना चाहिए। 1970 की दहाई से चीन ने चीनी दानिश और हिकमत के तहत जो है वो तरक्की की है और जदीद कारी हासिल की है और इस दौरान सबसे एक अहम बात ये रही कि जो आप कह सकते हैं कि जो चीनी जदीद कारी है इसकी अप, इसकी अपनी एक समत है अपना एक रास्ता है और इसमें जो सबसे अहम चीज़ है कि चीन ने जो अफराधी कुत है जो चीन की अफराधी कुत है उसको तरक्की दी है उसके बलबोते पर तरक्की की और सबसे अहम बात यह भी है कि जो अमरीकी बालादस्ती थी या अमरीकी अजारा दारी थी चीन ने उसको भी तोड़ा है और अपना एक नया तरक्याती नमूना जो है वो तख्लीक किया है और ये बड़ी खूबी है कि चीन का ये जो तरक्याती नमूना है इसमें जो तमाम मतनव तहजीबें हैं उनकी खसूसियात भी शामिल हैं जो उसे अमरीका से काफ़ी हद तक अलग करता है और अब देखना यह है कि मुस्तबिल में चीन जो है कैसे इस तरक्याती मॉडल को आगे बढ़ाता है और दुनिया इससे कैसे फ़ायदा उठाती है The Chinese initiatives respect the diversity of world civilizations, promote shared human values, and champion cultural inheritance and innovation. The process by which China is building a modern civilization may change how countries interact with each other. In June, worldwide interest was roused when Xi Jinping called for building a modern Chinese civilization. People, although they share a common destiny, are seeking their own paths to modernization based on their respective cultural origins. Civilization will either destroy itself or decide for a common structuring. Now China and Russia are saying, let's create the institutions first and put ideas together as a partners. I think there is no other way. The new form of human civilization proposed by China continues to enjoy widespread support in the international community. Sooner or later, clashes of civilizations will give way to cultural integration.